Here we are after hundreds of bets and dozens, <laughs> dozens of wins. <laughs> we have reached the finish line. Uh, let's get after it. Welcome to the Green Light Gambling Show, sponsored by DraftKings. Of course, joining me as always for our final football show of the year is Stanford Steve. How's it going, brother? Excellent, Christopher. How are you doing? I'm good. You got all your your uh, your gear on right now. We're all in. Our chips are in the middle of the table. And, I guess I don't uh, really have to like wait to figure out who you're gonna take. <laughs> you, have, you have the full well, cream sickle outfit, and it's dope. I love it. All right. What what it's not fun to take Mahomes. Who wants no. to take Mahomes? No, right? after, after this week, it might be the least fun ever. Yeah. To, to take Mahomes. I mean, if they yeah. win the game, it's we've we've been saying this for a while. Like likability, they're gonna definitely have to trade his likability for a decade uh mm. if they want to win this championship because yeah. it'll get real old real fast. But I don't know, man. Like what do you think is the biggest um piece of news to keep your eye on coming into it. is it Winfield is it is it something else um well I don't think like people are talking now there's going to be a possibility of a thunderstorm like I don't think the weather has anything to do with the outcome of this game I really don't you know it as well as anybody there's freaking thousands of footballs on the field and you know what they have nowadays that they didn't have in back in Super Bowl one and two or when your dad was playing they have ball dryers on the sidelines, like a wet ball. It's not going to be a factor. Ball I'm dryer. sorry. I, I don't think it's going to be a factor. Um, I th- I think the health of Winfield and Whitehead uh, are, you know, I, the last I saw was not, not at full speed or not, you know, fully ready yet. They were limited in practice. So to me, you know, we know, you know, we talked ad nauseum about, you know, the first time they they played. I don't take much of that game into account. I don't either. I don't either. I mean, 17 how- nothing the blink of an eye. Um, and I'll tell you right now, if that happens again, Buccaneers got no chance. No chance. Because uh, that foot's not getting off the gas. So I don't, I, I really think it's what Kansas City does early to, to coincide with the injuries at tackle. I know Schwartz has been out for multiple weeks. But you know now the Fisher deal. I mean Barrett and and JPP have been phenomenal, and now Vita Vey is back. Like Bowles is gonna gonna have some things, and that's why I I sort of uh, been talking this week, Chris, and other things that I've been doing. But now this is the most important one. We know that is yeah. is the idea of both teams running the football. Yeah. I think with the Winfield and Whitehead thing. I mean that obviously <clears throat> they're gonna do something different, and I think they have to overcompensate. Tampa does if they don't have either or one of those two guys to protect their guys in the back end. So what does that do? Light box. That, yeah. Light box. Uh, you know how much confidence they have in, in Levante and Devin to cover Kelsey. So I think like that's, that's a matchup. Like, you know, keep him in front of you, keep everybody in front of you, you know, rat, do the old rally, run to the ball and, you know, leave the flats open and run that open. So I've been looking at, you know, running back props with, you know, I think Ronald Jones is, is huge on the other side, but with with Kansas City, you drafted Clyde edwards Elair in the first round. You paid Patrick Mahomes five hundred million dollars. Like, give give the biscuit to 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 yeah. your guys, you know. Yeah. Um, and on the other, you know, how much can you take away Tyreek Hill and Kelsey? I don't know, but I think if you play the patience game, which I think Bulls might do. Uh, early on to try and say, hey, you know, we'll take Dink and Dunk all the way down the field. Does Mahomes have the patience to do that? I don't know. So it's 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 going I, I like Tampa. I just I, I like I don't I don't think you're pressed in a in a situation where you have to bring like see if you can't get home rushing the passer before you start blitzing the exactly out of this guy. And I am of the belief that keeping things in front of you, especially early, because of what you said, if there's a repeat of seventeen nothing, it's over. I mean, forget it. You, you you're not even going to be in the game like you were the first time. So, you know, if I'm Todd Bowles, I mean, they they only played man in actuality nine times that game, mm-hmm. uh, which was a shock because it felt like a lot more. Um, you know, the other end of it, I'm actually more thinking about how much Spags is going to blitz Tom. Because he did that a lot week 12. On, the, on that, while I have you, 
Yeah. How much can Spags throw at Tom that he hasn't seen? Well, evidently a lot because generally Tom doesn't fare as well against Spags. I mean, like that's and and listen, that's all it's all relative. So him mm-hmm. not picking Spags apart is not faring relatively well. But you know, famously the Super Bowl and even some other matchups, he hasn't yep. been his best. So I don't think uh, you know, Spags, you heard him talk this week about trying to keep Tom Brady from reading their mail. You know, and I can hear him saying that I haven't been coached by him. <laughs> it's a term that just basically means like let's not let's not um, telegraph anything. Yep. You know, and so I think their disguises are going to be really key, and you know h- how they get into coverages late. And uh, if you're going to bring pressure on Tom, and this is one of my biggest pet peeves in general watching quarterbacks and, and defenses is if you're going to blitz a really good quarterback, do not be seven yards deep on the snap. So I think, you know, early on watching Kansas City and how Tom plays with the cadence, how, how Tom tries to identify things pre-snap, all the things we worried about first half of the season from a standpoint of he's not getting the motion pre-snap to identify. He's not getting certain things that he's used to. They're doing those things now. So I think that chess match pre-snap, I think it should be much more simple on the other uh, end of the football when Kansas City has the football. I think you do keep things in front of you. You pick your spots and you get after them up front. If you can't beat two backup tackles, now I said this this week on Jeff Schwartz's pod, it's not necessarily that each, like I'm not assuming these guys are matchups you'd rather have, but generally when you have two guys down from a communication standpoint, not just a skill standpoint, from a, you know, from a working together standpoints, you know, sliding the line, making calls, um, that in and of itself is a worry. And on top of that, you've got probably the best duo in the league down the stretch. Yeah. Uh, pass rushing against two backup tackles in the Super Bowl. If you can't exploit those matchups, and I'm not putting it all on JPP and Shaq because you can do things to mitigate. You can seven-man protect. You can get the ball out quick. You can do all those things. Somebody has to win up front. Whoever gets the one-on-one has to win. So don't walk away from the game and just automatically look at these guys. Look at how after the game, when the chips fall, how they block these guys. If they if they had to decide, hey, we're gonna let some other dude beat us, you know, the whole Belichick thing. Like, who are we gonna? Yeah. Let? I'm not gonna put it on Shaq and JPP necessarily, but somebody up front needs to win. Um, a couple things. I, I'm really um, interested to see what Tampa does by that one by three set where Kansas city comes out and they put Kelsey by himself into the boundary. And then they dance all those th- other three guys, you know, to the field, really interested to see what they do with that. Do they, do they put somebody else, uh, you know, on Kelsey in those circumstances? Cause they still go to him. He still runs his arrow from there. You know, he still runs his hitches, all that stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the big flavor that I want to, I want to see early on. And, and the other reason I like Tampa Bay is, I really expect Brady to come out and and be as sharp as as we've seen. And when I went back and looked at this, because I was just curious, and I, I know people have done other things in that. Do you know how many first uh, first quarter touchdown passes Tom Brady's thrown in his career in the Super Bowl? In the Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl, first quarter touchdown passes. Oh wait, hold on a second. This is going to be. I'm going to go with thirteen. How many touchdown passes has Tom Brady thrown in the first quarter of a in any uh, in, in a Super Bowl? No, wait, two of them he probably didn't throw too many, so I'll go down to eight. Zero. What? Zero touchdown passes in the first quarter of Super Bowls. You know how many points his team has scored in the first quarter of his super, his nine Super Bowls? Well, you're right. If if you if you I should say how many touchdowns? How many touchdowns his team has scored in the first quarter of of Super Bowl? They did start slow against Seattle. They we started slow, so zero against the Falcons. Um, You just said it. Zero. Zero. Period. Zero. Think about that. Damn. Think about that. And like I'm, because the whole time I'm saying like first half under has been crazy, man. Lately, it just feels like it's been. You know, just nuts thinking about it. And now we know what he's done in the second halves of Seattle, Atlanta. You know, they fell behind against, you know, you guys in Philly. He had to chuck it more than. But I really expect him to come out and be like that has been a dead set thing where 
he he, he has not been good. And and, it, and it, it's a product of people having two weeks to prepare for him. Like, let, let's, let's face it. Like, you know, all our analytic people wants to talk about data points. There's nine data points right there where he hasn't been well. Now, you know, the first Super Bowl in the Giants, you know, rematch, like there's a lot going on there. But when you just step back and think about it, like, holy shit, You're he's right. never they, thrown a touchdown never, pass in the first quarter. The over, you should never guess the over there because, yeah, the Giants, they struggled offensively both games there. They struggled. The only game that they were really in the Super Bowl prolific offensively other than the second half of the Atlanta uh, Super Bowl was the um, – I was just thinking about the Panthers game. They scored 30. Panthers, yeah. I watched that one again uh, this week. It, you know, But that was scoreless with six minutes left in the second quarter. And it I goes to the, the half 14-10. I was a Panthers fan growing up, so I was felt like we were in it the whole game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like, uh, it. I think it's interesting because this would be the year that you'd look at that and say, as we're about to give out our, our, our bets for uh, total and that sort of thing in the first half, I think you'd look at it this year and say, well, judging by that trend, has it ever been more noticeable that they've struggled out of the gate, like, all year long, like, the Bucks have been slow in the first mm-hmm. quarter. Three and outs early. This would be the game that it totally turns around because it yeah. makes too much sense. It makes it, too it, much sense. It, it really does. And then look at on the other side. Look at Kansas City. I mean, the whole year we've talked about how they've let teams hang around, you know, been sloppy early on. And, you know, mm-hmm. Patrick goes and pulls a rabbit out of his hat. So, to me – if you're looking at over under first half, thing, like the first half under, like I like got, the I mean, over. La- yeah, okay. I like the there, first I mean, half. Over. I, I, I like the first half over, and I like the under for the game. And right now we have first half under is twenty seven and a half, um, and we have the over under at fifty six. Yep. You know, I could see twenty one ten at the half, or even you know, 17, 10 at the half and it being right on the nose, but it's going to be in the, in the, in the, in the region. Um, I think it'll grind to a little bit of a halt out of the half. And, uh, and I like the under. Okay. Um, the rain, the rain, the rain is not what's driving this thing. No, the rain is, as we've talked about, it's not like, in fact, there's more of a chance of some fluky turnover and, you know, the overhitting, um, I just, I just feel like this is a game where the the gravity of it doesn't speed it up; it slows it down a little bit. Um, you know, like like last year felt. There's some big games you get into where the the pace feels frenzied. Tampa's not going to do that. They're not no. going to let that happen. They're 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 wanting this game to be in control early. Um, they don't want it to be out of control, so they're going to dictate tempo. Um, I, I like the under for the game. Uh, when I'm looking at players too, I I've been looking at the running backs. I mentioned Elair. His combined uh, rushing and receiving is like 43 yards. I like that over. I think they're going to feed him. I also saw a prop of uh, Clyde Edwards Elair rush yards more than the age of the MVP. Oh wow! Which I thought was real. Like I like that's interesting. Edwards. I- I wouldn't like – there's a couple of Chiefs rushing totals. I said this earlier. Like, I'd rather – when I was on with Jimmy, it was like, I, I would rather take the under on pretty much any rushing total. But if I had to pick one, it would be his. And I'm talking about Chiefs running back. So – Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I could I could see him be – I could see him hitting 40. Um, but then I could also see Tom Brady winning the MVP. There you go. So that's tough, dude. It's tough. You've it's done your right homework up. now. No, I, I know he's old. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that's an interesting prop. Um, I, but going back to that on the other side, I really like Ronald Jones in this game. Love him. I think he's he's more dynamic. And people forget, like, he won this starting job. He won this job through production on the field. And I love the playoff Lenny thing and all that. Mm-hmm. And, and it's been great. And they fed him. That's because Ronald Jones wasn't available. He's more dynamic. He's he's way more dangerous in you know running the football and catching the football. So I look at Ronald Jones. I mean, I think his rush yards are thirty something. And I mean, in the in the last game, think about this: they were down seventeen nothing. He had nine carries for sixty six yards. Like right. I think he's going to get fed. Yeah, man, this has been a pleasure having Stanford Steve on every Friday, and uh, the gambling will continue. We just we just uh, we're going to take a little break from football here, uh, and we need it. 
Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. So uh, catch Steve again on uh, on green light at some point here. And um, thanks, my brother. It's been fun. Absolutely. Thank you, my man. Good luck to everybody Sunday. We really mean that. <laughs>